Hello guys, welcome back to another video. For, so for today, we will be looking at how we can solve Sky Tower, which is another recommended vulnerable machine for OSCP preparation. So this is the VM that we will be tackling today. So as usual, we have already completed the mmap scan to save time. So this is the usual command that we execute with mmap. And immediately we can see that SSH is having a filtered state. So this could mean so this means that it could be behind a firewall or a proxy because we can also see that there is a script proxy running. So it's very likely that in order to assess SSH we need to configure to use this squid proxy so we can take a look at how we can achieve that in a moment and the obvious entryway would be via this web server so it's not very confusing since there are only these three TCP ports to look at so let's quickly look at the web server with our browser Okay, it's a login screen, so let's try to inject some special characters. Maybe we can mess around with the login. Let's take a look at burp. So this was the login request and it is saying login failed. And this is the, this is the request for the slash directory. And there is nothing of interest in the raw response. Okay, so just a login form. Okay, so as usual, like we have demonstrated before in our earlier videos, we can make use of payload all the things to get a list of SQL injection payloads that we can use in Burp. SQL injection, intruder, so intruder is the module in burp suite, so we can use that, off bypass because we are trying to bypass authentication, so this list of requests could be used to attempt to bypass login forms, so this is the login request, we send it to intruder, and we define the payload where we want to use so for example let's do it in the email um, email parameter so we define it with this add symbol and then we paste in the payload so um, from here so you just copy everything and then you paste it here and we can send it off so because this is the free version of burp, there's throttle, there's throttling. The request might take a little bit of time. So from here, we can filter out by the difference in the HTTP status or the content length. That should let us know if we were able to identify any SQL injection. We could also just send it off with SQL map which will do the discovery and exploitation for us but SQL map is not allowed in OSCP so let's just um, forget about that so immediately we can see some difference in length so let's click on this to filter it so you can see that this returns a much bigger content length compared to the other requests and you see that there is a SQL syntax so it's very likely there is a SQL injection in this, but we just need to figure out the correct syntax to use. Okay, so Intruder has completed running and there is no 302. I'm looking for something like 302 because it will indicate that there's a redirection due to the successful login. And we filter by con content 
length and it's just all syntax errors so okay that didn't work we can investigate the syntax error and try to fix it but from the error being displayed it is very likely that this is a SQL injection so let's continue to look at this and there's an off bypass tool so we can try off bypass tool instead let's see if it works let's paste it in and send it off okay it seems that the second intruder that we are executing is not going to return anything useful so let's just exit this we have to manually investigate what is going on instead of just running automated um, discovery like intruder my guess is that there is some kind of filtering in place so let's try to logically look at it let's start with a single code okay so it's showing us the sql query so that's great it's not like completely blind so it says that there's a syntax error so if we do double single code double single code is fine because we close it off properly so let's do a is displaying or uh, one equals to one okay so this is weird so the or or and equal sign is not displaying so let's try hello okay so it's showing us hello but if we were to use or it is not showing what about n n is not showing as well what about let's add the double single um let's add the double dash here it's not showing as well so special characters special characters are fine but this dash dash is not showing so dash dash is commenting out the remaining of the query so my guess is that they have blacklisting of special they have blacklisting of sql syntax like n or dash dash to prevent sql injection so if we were to identify the blacklist we could potentially bypass it so what we want to achieve is something like this so we want to return an always true statement which is all one equals to one because one equals to one is true and all means that regardless of the email this condition will be true so this will allow us to log in but the problem here is this is being filtered and this is being filtered so the first step we need to know is how we can how we can substitute this or with another character that will bypass the blacklist so one way we can do this is the double pipe so this represents the or condition as well without using the actual or keyword so let's try and do this so you can see that the double pipe is not being um, blacklist it's not being blacklisted you can see that yep it's not being blacklisted so we can definitely use this for our keyword or for example if you look at this if we were to use these four strings these four characters the or will actually be removed because there's a blacklist checking for this character you see the all is being removed from here but if we were to use the double pipe characters to substitute all this works and it's not being blacklisted so let's use this instead of all and one equals to one and the commenting as well so we will need to um, substitute this dash dash with something else to comment out the remaining of the password validation in the SQL query so another way to comment in my SQL is, is using the hash so this works as a commenting this works as comment as well so whatever that is behind after this will be commented out which means that the password validation will be bypassed and it works 
So we have successfully performed SQL injection to bypass the login manually. It makes sense, right? Because you have to identify the blacklist and then you have to find other characters that can substitute what you want to do. So username is John, here is John, and SSH. So as we have already noticed, SSH is in a filtered state. So it's very obvious that we need to proxy it via script proxy so that it will not be filtered. Because if we if we pass through our traffic but um if we pass through our traffic via this proxy, the originating uh source address will be from the server itself. So it's gonna bypass this. So what we can do here is to use proxy chains. So we need to change the config of it. So SOX5, so let's change it to 3128. And our target IP address 138. So now we should be able to proxy chains SSH join at so this should work. Connection refuse. Uh, maybe it's not a SOX. Oh, we need to sell it to HTTP. HTTP. Okay, so we need to remove this first and then we proxy change again. Yes. John is here. Uh, what? Why is the password wrong? Here is John. Oops. Here is John. Okay, okay, so let's recap what just happened. So initially, I configured the proxy chains configuration file to be using a SOX proxy, which is an error on my end because the squid is a HTTP proxy. So we need to specify it to be a HTTP proxy over here and we point it to our target at the squid proxy port. So we can use proxy chains now to SSH as John into the server and the password is here is John and funds have been redrawn and we are immediately closed off so there's a way to try and maintain the shell access we can immediately try and execute a command to hold it there ssh execute command Let's see how we can do this. I can't remember what was the what what I can't remember what is the command to do that. No, this is not the way. SSH execute command and stay logged in. Okay, dash T. Yep, yep, yep. I think dash T is the is the way to go. I've done this before, but I can't exactly remember it. But dash T does ring a bell. So let's do dash T and get a bin bash. Here is John. That didn't work. Mm, bin sh. Here is John. Yep, 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 yep. So bin sh works. Okay, so you can see that we are John and we have successfully we have successfully gotten uh, initial foothold into our target system. So yeah, so let's go ahead and perform privilege escalation. Let's see what's running on the server. Apache, okay, DHCP squid. My SQL is running. Oh right, because there's a web application, right? So my SQL is definitely running. Let's go to the web root directory, which is usually at var www. And let's take a look at the login. Login.php Okay. Right, so immediately we can see SQL injection. There's a blacklisted array that contains keywords that we cannot use. So we can see that all keywords is being filtered. 
n is being filtered and dash dash is being, being filtered yep so interestingly enough though the equal sign is supposedly being filtered but we were able to do the one equals to one thing yep all right so okay so we have the my sql credentials over here as well root root so we can potentially log in to sql database which is only exposed on the local host which is why the mmap result didn't show this okay, so let's take a look at what are the users available on the system we have john sarah and william okay so my guess is that we have to escalate to another user and then to root because the author created additional users for us so it should be quite obvious Let, let's take a look at the groups oops group without the s are there any privileged users okay there are no hints on which user we should target mm, that's weird usually it will show something like a pseudo -word additional user or something like that that's fine we can go to the home directory to look at the users directory we cannot see anything in sarah and william directory so there is nothing hinting us where we can proceed hmm. let's take a look at the database my sql dash root root all right we are in use sky tech show use sky tech oh it's capital sensitive show tables there's only one table let's look at it okay so we have william sarah oh i mean we have john sarah and william there is no password hash it's just clear text password this is bad okay so we know john password so let's take a look at sarah let's take a look at sarah and william so I hate this job, Sarah. Okay, proxy chains SSH Sarah at. I hate this job. Ah, uh, it's the same thing. We need to have the slash t to force the shell be to force the shell. Uh, I hate this job. Okay, we are in Sarah. Let's go to our home directory. Bash. There's nothing here. Hmm, there's nothing in John as well. Sensible for William. Right, let's try sensible. In bash dash I Sky Tower Proxy Chains SSH William at our target dash T to force shell. Sensible sensible that is definitely not a typo on my end but let me just copy and paste this just to be sure okay so it's not the correct password that means uh, this user is not reusing his web application password on his SSH so that's great for him so we are John, right? Okay, so let's see what let's see if we have any pseudo access. Here is John. Nope, nada. Let's try Sarah. Pseudo L. Oh, Sarah can run pseudo commands. That's interesting. So we can run cat accounts. LS accounts. Oh, okay, so we can only cat files that are in the accounts directory and we can only ls files in the accounts directory. What is this accounts directory? There's nothing in the accounts directory. Okay, uh, we don't need privileges. We don't need root privileges to list actually because it's word readable. 
we can cap files but it's empty inside that's interesting so when you append something like wildcard you can actually do directory traversal something like um, accounts and then you can traverse it to the main the main um, what do you call this the main root directory and then you can look at what is inside root that's weird bin ls accounts root why is it permission denied i should be able to do it oh right i need to run sudo ls yeah 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 um i hate this job yeah so i can do something like this sudo ls accounts directory traversal back to root yeah so you can see that we can list what is inside the root directory because of this misconfiguration you can perform traversal back and to a privileged directory that you normally wouldn't have access to so similarly um, we can read the flag file we can read the flag file with cat because cat is because we are allowed to execute cat as sudo as well and for this we don't even need the password so let's do the same for this flag.txt uh, oops it's a typo on my end i need to slash root flag three congrats have a cool one to celebrate root password is the sky tower okay to be honest this is quite easy right yep it's quite obvious as well you can list the file you can do traversal with this wildcard and then you can cat the file and the password is in the flag.txt so let's switch to root with the sky tower password and we are root this is how you can solve this challenge if you have enjoyed this video or learned something from it or you find it interesting please help to like and subscribe to the channel thank you